afternoon and thank you for that warm introduction. Um, hello everyone, it's a pleasure to be with you here this afternoon. I'd like to begin by acknowledging the Wadawurrung people as official owners of the land on which we are meeting. I pay my respects to their elders past, present and emerging and to all First Nations people who are here with us today. I also acknowledge that sovereignty over this land was never ceded. It is indeed a privilege to be addressing you here today, and I say that from a number of perspectives. A few years ago, I would have never thought that I would be standing here in Ballarat talking to the Farmers' Federation, but I am truly honoured to be doing so. I arrived to Australia as a migrant in 1989 after having to leave my country of origin, Sri Lanka, due to the war. My dad is an accountant, my mum is a secretary. My dad grew up amongst the tea plantations in the high country of Sri Lanka. My uncle later went on to specialise in agriculture, working both domestically and internationally. Our family arrived in Melbourne with the suitcases we carried between us and nothing else and began life again from scratch. We had the benefit of going to great public schools that helped us settle in. A few years after arriving here, my mum got very sick. But thanks to our fantastic public health system, she got better. I dedicated my life to supporting communities and became a social worker, first in drug and alcohol rehabilitation, mental health work, and later family and settlement services for newly arrived migrants to this country. My husband grew up on a dairy farm in Timbu, just outside Warrnambool. When I first met him, I noticed how much he loved milk, and then I found out why. We spent many a weekend with his dad in Waterfall before he passed away, recounting the years that were so very tough for his family as working the land in hard economic times took their toll on their family too. I know that each of you and the farmers you represent know this land and its struggles like very well <coughs> brothers. On that note, I would like to thank the Victorian Farmers Federation for the invitation to address this conference today. <coughs> I know the strong advocacy uh, role that has been taken by the BFF with powerful results to date. Your focus on the issues facing farmers and the agricultural industry, including things like telecommunications, onshore gas, water, energy power, transport, uh, and the like, have helped highlight some of the biggest practical challenges to the viability of farming while aiming to prevent and preempt policies or actions by governments that you consider to be detriment detrimental to your viability. I know that some of you, and possibly many of you, may be wondering, do the Greens get it? Well, I'd like to reassure you that we do. I'm proud to stand here representing the biggest team of Greens members of Parliament in the history of Victorian Parliament. With eight MPs representing all the metropolitan regions, we are now determined to break through in regional Victoria. And in 2018, it just may be that year. Over the last few elections, we have seen support for the Greens grow in regional and rural Victoria. And that is happening because more and more people in the regions are appreciating that the old parties are too often putting the interests of big business ahead of the interests of our communities. At our very core, the farmers you represent and the Greens share a deep love and care for this land. You see firsthand how our climate, climate impacts everything. You have seen our weather patterns change. You have endured in good times and in bad. You get that producing our food locally is much better for our health, our economy, and our precious environment. While we may not always agree on everything, know that we are linked together through our many shared values. We are so proud of our Greens candidates in rural and regional areas who have lived and worked in their local communities and on the land and know the problems and challenges we face. Our candidate for the upper house seat in Northern Victoria is Nicole Rowan, who grew up on a sheep farm, sheep and wheat farm near Woolmerland. The late farmer and Greens candidate Rod May was a champion of sustainable food production. Rod was a fourth generation farmer who lived and worked on his 200 acre farm in central Victoria and was a pioneer of ecological farming. Our founders and leaders came from a passion for protecting our land and galvanised the nation into action. And you all did the same when a few years ago you stood shoulder to shoulder with environmental activists and farmers and said that you did not want your land torn up by gas fracking. That united and collective action was courageous and absolutely necessary. 
and who led the nation. The Greens are poised to hold the balance of power in both houses of parliament following November's state election. And I wanted to share with you how we believe we can help shape a future for all Victorians. Like you, the Greens believe that Victoria's land is precious. We want to protect our land for future generations so that Victorians can continue to live on the land, raise families and grow our own food. But our land is under threat from climate change, from miners and drillers and from greedy banks and developers. That is why today I am calling on the Andrews government to make the moratorium an onshore gas driven permanent. And equally, I call on the Liberal National Coalition to do the same and commit to ensuring the security of the ban on fracking into the future. We do not need, we do not need the gas. We can power Victoria with 100% renewable energy. What we do need is our land, including our agricultural land, protected from drilling. We share the same concerns about gas drilling on farmland as you do. Gas exploration, whether conventional or unconventional, degrades the soil and risks contaminants, groundwater, uh, contaminates groundwater and surface water, causing long-term damage to farmland. Animals and plants can be exposed to toxins, causing disease and death. The access roads, the mining companies will demand will fragment your farmland and reduce your productivity. When the CSIRO looked at the long-term impacts of CSG exploration, they found that fracking on farmland resulted in a loss of $2.17 million over 20 years, with the biggest losses from access tracks in these areas. That's $2.17 million that could be going into your local economy and boosting our exports and instead is sitting in the pockets of mining and gas companies. Like you, the Greens welcomed the ban on fracking and the moratorium on conventional onshore gas exploration. And we'll keep pushing to make this moratorium permanent. There is no reason to allow the mining and drilling companies back onto our land. We need to be looking into the future, not clinging to the past. We know that a Victoria powered by 100% clean renewable energy is possible. What we need is the courage to make it happen. And shifting to 100% renewables is also what we need to address the greatest threat to our collective futures and the future of our land, climate change. I know recent comments from Fiona Simpson, the new president of the National Farmers Federation, acknowledging this reality. She has said that farmers can't and won't ignore what is right before their eyes when it comes to wild climate variability. We know that the average temperature will increase by nearly three degrees by 2017. Rainfall will decrease and become more erratic. We will have more frequent heat waves and longer and harsher fire seasons. Extreme weather events such as droughts, floods and storms will be commonplace. Pest animals and weeds will start migrating south to cooler temperatures. We will see new diseases introduced into our regions. We are already experiencing the effects of decades of inaction. Last year was Australia's third hottest year on record. Our state is warmer and drier than ever before. You know all of this because you are on the front line. When polit while politicians in Canberra argue about whether climate change is real or not, you are seeing its effects firsthand. The more frequent and intense droughts have made it hard to grow and maintain crops. Heat waves are placing animals under stress. Fruits need to be picked earlier and some no longer grow in the regions they used to be growing. These events are all linked. I know you are developing strategies to help you adapt to Victoria's changing climate. We're exploring soil conservation strategies and developing innovative approaches to bioenergy. But we can and should do more. We have the opportunity to work together to address climate change and ensure a viable future for farming. The Greens want to see a Victoria powered by renewable energy. We will work with the farming and regional communities to help switch to renewable energy. Our plan for a public energy retailer will help keep prices down, saving the average Victorian $300, $320 a year, ensuring our electricity retail is run for people, not purely for private profits. We support providing funding and assistance to help you implement sustainable agricultural systems so you can protect your soil and land for future generations. Landcare was born in Victoria and reflects Victorian values. Communities working together to protect the future of our land, waterways and biodiversity. But the current government has slashed landcare funding by 33%, making it harder for you to protect your land. In 2016, my colleagues in Canberra secured an extra $100 million for landcare. 
uh, that you can use to fight land degradation and put in place sustainable agricultural practices. And we will keep fighting to make sure you have the support that you need. Australia is fortunate, due to its island status, to be relatively free of pests and diseases that significantly impact agriculture in other nations. But the warming of the planet and the increase in the movement of people and things around the world has put our systems at risk. We've seen an increase in exotic pests and disease, which risks the health of our forests, rivers and wetlands, and we also risk the health of our agricultural industry. The Greens will continue to resist the attempts by the old parties to weaken the biosecurity of our country. We will call for a full overhaul of the system to ensure it is ready to meet the challenges of the 21st century. My colleagues in Canberra have been very active on this issue and I know they will continue to fight to protect your farms from disease and pests. We know how tough it is to be working and living on the land and the old parties have not made that very easy for you. The government has stripped away funding for local councils who have, turned, who have in turn passed these costs on to you in the form of disproportionate rates. Councils should not have to depend on rates to survive. They provide their local communities with crucial services and links, and they should be able to rely on government funding for many of these services. The old parties have allowed large corporations to get away with dodgy behaviour and exploit hard-working farming communities. The stories coming out of the Banking Royal Commission of farmers being forced off their land that they have lived on for decades are heartbreaking. We heard of farmers struggling to make ends meet in face, in the, uh, face of ongoing drought and increased debt, while the banks threatened repossession of their farms and homes. The Greens called for a Royal Commission into the banking, banking sector years ago, which was ignored by the same old parties. They refused to stand up to the big banks and they allowed the banking sector to continue to exploit people for years. Competition policy in this country is a failure for the community. We see that the big banks were acted with impunity for years. We see it in telecommunications and the disastrous Victorian energy market. There is a similar story in our food market. For too long, our food market has been dominated by the supermarket duopoly. Australia has one of the most concentrated food retail sectors in the world. The two major supermarkets sell around 60% of our food. With such a market share, this, this comes, uh, this comes, these companies are able to employ predatory tactics bullying suppliers and forcing competitors out of business. Farmers direct a delivery service that allows shoppers to buy directly from farmers went into the administration earlier this year. We know Victorians love our food. We've embraced dining out, cafe culture, community gardens, and local food markets. This is why the Greens want to reconnect Victorians with the farmers who grow and produce their food and make it easier to sell direct to local communities. We support the development of regional food hubs, farmers markets, farmers cooperatives, and other innovative solutions. We will encourage Victorians to eat local and shop local. The Greens have long been advocates at the state and federal level for much better food labeling processes too. We believe Australians should be able to clearly see where our food has come from. Quality rail services and ports are necessary to be able to deliver produce to customers. Short-sighted thinking from the old parties has allowed our rail, rail lines to rust. The Murray Basin Rail Project is plagued by the maze. This government sold the Port of Melbourne to a private consortium, our last publicly owned major strategic asset. We fear that putting a private monopoly in charge, no matter how tightly it's regulated, is risking our export competitiveness. Our assets should be kept in public hands and public services operated for the public good. The Greens believe governments should put individuals and communities ahead of large corporations and vested interests. And we want to create a better future for all of us, not just the people in Melbourne, but all Victorians across our state. Successive governments have stripped back services in regional Victoria. Passenger and freight rail services have been cut and the lines left to rust. Health services are spread out and under pressure. It can be isolating the land, and even more so when you can't access the health you need. This is unacceptable. Living in rural and regional Victoria should not mean putting up with fewer services and lower quality services. Earlier this year, our party developed our most expansive rural and regional policy yet. It is based on our belief that the sustainability 
productivity and resilience of rural and regional areas are vital to Victoria's economic and social prosperity. We will look to roll back years of neglect of country Victoria, of country Victoria and ensure that everyone in state has access to quality services. We want all Victorians to have access to public transport and we want it to be fast, frequent, affordable and reliable. My predecessor, Greg Barb, was known for hounding successive governments over V-Line services. They are not up to scratch and they should be. Young people in rural and regional areas should have easy access to TAFE and university. Comprehensive community services, including drug and alcohol services, disability, mental health and family violence services are a must in regional communities. We want rurally focused financial properties so that your assets and loans are managed by local people who you trust, not by faceless executives in the city. We want country Victorians to be able to have reliable phone coverage and high speed internet. The failure of the Bobola NBN system is an example of how governments can get it so wrong, but the vision is right and we should be connecting every corner of this country with each other. And as in Melbourne, we also want to promote sustainable planning in our regional centres. You will uh, have heard today how Victoria's population is booming. You will also be aware of the risks you impose to the lands you own. Developers with dollar signs in their eyes are prowling the edges of Melbourne and have been snapping up farmland, areas that were once fields and pastures are now covered in houses. On Wednesday, the Age newspaper reported on the increased land banking on Melbourne's edges where investors buy up cheap farmland in the hopes that it will be rezoned for housing in the future. This practice continues despite the urban growth boundary and the protections we have on the green wedges around the city. Once land is rezoned as residential, it becomes harder for farms to operate as many common practices on the farms are incompatible with residential areas. This affects everyone. If our sprawl continues at its current rate, we will have more people to feed but less land to grow a food on. The Greens are opposed to overdevelopment on the edges of Melbourne and our major regional centres. While our population growth presents an opportunity to invest in and grow our regional areas, this should not be done at the expense of viable farmland. I'm proud also to hold the planning portfolio on, on behalf of our Greens MPs in the State Parliament and we will be pushing for more fair and sensible planning policies driven by local communities, which limits the spread of urban areas and protects green spaces and agricultural land. So while there are things that we may disagree on, we also appreciate how tough it is to live and work on the land. We want to continue to talk with you about the areas where we disagree as well as the issues we have in common. We all know that climate change, what, the, what impact climate change is having on our country and we want to work with you on the best ways to both mitigate and adapt to our changing climate. We know the important role you play in caring for our land and producing our food and the raw materials for our lives. As our Northern Victorian candidate, Nicole Rowan often says, what you put into the environment, you put into you. I want to say again, it has been an honor to speak with you today. I look forward to working with you uh, in an honest and uh, in a fruitful relationship uh, with the BFF and your communities and the people you represent across rural and regional communities in Victoria. There are so many issues that we face as Victorians. In November, we have a chance uh, to set the course uh, for even a brighter and more transformative future. We have your interests in our hearts and we look forward to working with you. Thank you very much.